Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. I'm your host, Sean T, and I am, I always say I'm excited, but today I'm extra excited. Number one, uh, if you've been following along on social media, you know that my husband, Scott, just turned 50 years old, and I love him so much. And my friends and I wanted to do something extremely special for him. Let's just say that Scott is obsessed <laughs> with RuPaul's Drag Race. And so I was like, what am I going to do? And so he's always talked about one of the drag queens being the most incredible performer, hands down. So that's what we did. We, we were like, we're gonna try for the best and we're gonna search for more, but we got the best. And so today you're gonna to see a very special interview with Scott. I'm gonna leave, Scott's gonna do the interview and he's gonna interview an incredible drag queen from RuPaul's Drag Race. Her name is Aquaria. He's gonna do the interview they're gonna talk about how you trust and believe and how you come up in your life and kind of fight through battles. And how do you get to be a drag queen? Like, how do you have to kind of go through that knowing that in your life, being gay is one thing, but being a drag queen is a whole nother situation to accomplish. And so this is gonna be really great. And I hope you can just really open your mind and feel the interview, feel the love. And honey, if you wanna snap, pop, crack, kick your leg while you're listening, do it. Just don't be driving while you do it. Get ready to trust and believe. Somebody say it again. No, no, no. What's up? He's better than Oprah. Come on, y'all. This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. My name is Scotty Rocks, aka Scott Photobombs. Doesn't even matter. Look at so, you, slim sheet. I know. So here's the deal. It's my 50th birthday. I'm actually not 50. I'm 126. I'm really, really old. But my husband has surprised me with a whole like fashion photo thing and a surprise guest. It is RuPaul's Drag Race royalty. Like when I say royalty, like royalty, royalty, royalty. This is Aquaria. Hello. Everyone, welcome Aquaria to the stage. Trust and believe I'm so excited to be here. Exactly. So I'll say this. I'm a little overwhelmed because of you and everything about you and how much RuPaul's Drag Race means to me. Only because there's just such an impact that the show has on people because of the stories they share. There are people who don't know anything about it and they don't know anything about you. Can you tell me a little bit about who you are and growing up and how you kind of became who you are. Um, so I, my name is Aquaria. Yes. I was the winner of season 10 of yes. RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes, 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 yes. It was a while ago, but I still appreciate the applause. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I grew up uh, in the suburbs of Philadelphia to a pretty, I suppose, open-minded, in, th in theory, uh, family. Uh, they were always cool with, you know, kind of whatever I did, I, I still felt the, the normal fearing of the parents that you yeah, should yeah. feel just to be on your P's and Q's. Yeah. You know, whatever I was doing in life, they just wanted me to do the best that I could. And uh, whether I was one thing or the other, just do it to the best of your ability yeah. and uh, find success where you can. I grew up in a smart little cookie. I had a lot of interests all over the place. I used to be much more physically fit than I am now, but I still... <laughs> Fit physically. Um, <laughs> what you don't know is she was down on the floor, killing it like death drops and everything. So she's kind of physically fit. Sorry. Still got a little bit, she's, but uh, she's kind of got. It. I used to be doing ballet and all that, so yeah. a little bit got back it. in the, okay. back in the past. But yeah, I, I moved to New York in uh, 2014 to pursue a uh, at least an associate's degree in uh, fashion design. Uh, after my first year uh, and the first summer here. It really like clicked with me that that was just like not it. After it was like my first uh, year as a sophomore, I've always been interested in school. I'm, as I said, I'm pretty smart. I love studying and learning and all that. But uh, for some reason, I was just like, hold on, wait. This is like, I don't think I'm gonna be making people happy mm. doing what I was doing. You know, at a sewing machine. You know, drawing nine head tall, skinny little women yeah. on paper. Like that's just not gonna make people happy the way that I think I should be making people happy. So at that moment, I decided to give up all that, uh, which financially was, you know, a little bit of a stress <laughs> as well. Um, 
but my parents even supported me in that despite how hard that was. Uh, I started hustling around the city, working as hard as I could to you know, make a name for myself while I was still 18, 19, whatever. I don't know how I would manage to scam all of that, but uh, <laughs> I guess in 2016, 17, mm -hmm. I decided to uh, try my hand at scamming the producers of RuPaul's Drag Race. But first, before you even went there, like, oh, what made you think, you know, maybe I should d dabble into drag? <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, well, I've always been into, uh, I feel like a lot of drag queens can relate to this. They've always been into theatricality, yeah. performing, makeup, hair, fashion, yeah. pop stars, all that stuff. Yeah. And for me, I had also always been into drag and RuPaul's Drag Race specifically. Okay. Um, I know all throughout my upbringing, there were so many uh, references to drag, and um, you know, Drag Race came out in 2010, yeah. I believe, yeah. or something like that. And uh, which, of course, you watched, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah. I, some, I don't know how I stumbled upon it. I think I used. I used to watch a lot of like um, beauty videos on YouTube mm -hmm. back before it became the as, thing. as drama and crazy as it yeah. is now. Yeah. Um, so I remember there was one uh, makeup artist named Petrie Lou was their uh, username, and I think they were talking about RuPaul's Drag Race. And I'm like, what is this? What's RuPaul? Like what? Yeah. I uh, started watching it and obviously absolutely sucked into it uh, that moment. And uh, yeah, I just remember all throughout my childhood and my teenage years and stuff, there was just so much obvious drag and so many subtle moments of drag. Whether it was like a Bugs Bunny in the dress in the in the opera little Viking hat thing yeah. or uh, James from Team Rocket in Pokemon. Yeah. Like, it was always some dude dressing up like a lady yeah. and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that doesn't look do like me, but I feel like that is given very much me. Yeah. So uh, it's just always been uh, something uh, that has not been obvious in my life, but just always an underlying of interest. theme. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love that. I authentically love that because lots of people on Sean's podcast have heard my story that you know, I didn't feel like I really came out until I met Sean. I played professional soccer, I was an athlete, so for me, it was uh, very difficult to be who I was because I was in a sports world. I'm 160 years old. Congratulations. So thank you. I look great. I'm a vampire. I made. A, I married a virgin. So oh, that's how I stay so see? young. That's what you gotta do. I married a virgin. virgin now, real quick. Yes. Okay. He, <laughs> he has shut it down, and I'm still young. So thanks to him. But I'm, um, I think that uh, for me, growing up was such a different environment where you know it wasn't allowed people weren't allowed to be themselves. Mm -hmm. And I see someone like you that is able to express themselves in any form, even exemplary, like more so than, than anyone that's allowed to. Mm -hmm. So when is it that you felt that, you know, you were, you were in, I think you said FIT, you went to FIT, right? And you're like, this is not, this is not me. Like, what, where was the turning point for you to be like, I'm gonna go for it. I mean, you, you mentioned a little bit of RuPaul's Drag Race. Right, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say because, um, you know, still very into fashion. That's still a big part of my life. Yeah. And um, I've always been into learning. And also, school is, I'm sure as most people who go to school knows, it's a big uh, financial thing. And my parents were never in like the fiercest financial position yeah. and certainly neither was I. Um, so that was a big uh, decision, but I'd been, you know, having, Dabbling in drag for quite a bit, whether it was just in my bathroom or you know sneaking into little bars and clubs here and there yeah. um, during my freshman year, and I think uh, just after living a a really open I don't want to say open minded, but like a a summer that I was not necessarily expecting for myself that just really opened my mind to a lot of different things. Returning back to school for my sophomore year, that first week it was just everything that was like nitpicking yeah. in that first week where there was, you know, draping teachers being weird about some dumb stuff when other people are like flopping or, you know, but anyway, it just, I was like, there's no way it's that important that you're like being hard on me for this. And there's no way that me doing this uh, in 10 years is going to, maybe it makes me feel filled. Maybe it fulfills me up in some fancy apartment in Manhattan, yeah, yeah. Uh, but maybe it doesn't. And uh, more likely than not, it might not. So how can I improve the lives of others, perhaps even improve my own life, and uh, you know, set myself up for a lot more success in the future. And uh, I know like, taking that jump and that plunge is a lot for a lot of people, and it is, I think, maybe more daring than I allow myself to believe it was. 
Um, so I remember like the night that I realized I was like, oh my god, mom, like. I know I was just at the bar, and I know this sounds like I'm calling you all messed up, but like I'm really, this is weird, but I'm gonna mean this. Um, and it was just like weird, yeah, for a minute. But I'm Fiesta now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you had that moment where you were like, I'm doing stuff, and I don't know that it means much. People want to try and understand where it is and why it is that you had the motivation to do something more. Like how for those people that are stuck. And that you know, you know, they're doing the everyday normal stuff. Like, why is it that you decided to? You know what? I'm gonna take this to the next level. I'm gonna like do something better for myself. And you actually mentioned. Well, I mean, I don't think it's like the the most blatantly obvious. No, thing. go, yeah. Um, I, I feel like dropping out of school and becoming a drag queen. On Say paper it. doesn't sound like maybe the most brilliant idea, especially when you put a lot of effort into one of those things and only some effort into another thing. I feel like I've heard people say similar things to this, but for some reason it feels weird coming out of my mouth. Nothing has felt like more right than that decision, which I'm just really grateful that for as few times as I trust myself, that that time was the right time and yes. that you know it didn't go in spite or in vain. Certainly, I, I knew that it was a big risk and I knew that I had to work very hard to have any of it even pay off just in a in a societal way, let yeah, alone a yeah. financial way. Yeah. But I'm obviously super grateful that I put my mind to that and that if I didn't put my mind to anything else in my life, that did not suck. That's exactly where I'm, I think I'm trying to go is that that you had this moment of realization where it's like, you know what, I'm doing what I what I think I'm supposed to be doing, right? You're going to school and you're you love fashion. For sure. But you're like I feel like there's something more. And I think that a lot of people who listen to Sean's podcast are about, I've got a life and I'm trying to figure out how I take the next step. And for me, it was soccer. Like I always knew, I always knew growing up I was going to be three things. This is funny. I was gonna be in Del Sonics in eighth grade, which is a choir. Funny. Okay. I was gonna be on Jeopardy. Woo! Were you on Jeopardy? I was not, but uh, hold it. I'm, I, I, I'm still, it's early. It's early. Going. It's early. And then the third thing I knew, I was going to be a professional soccer player. They're, they're just like, I just knew that there were things that, you know, whether it was timing or something, that, that it was about trying to figure that out. So I think for me, what I'm, what I'm glad you said it, it was like, you knew there was something more that you wanted to do. And so, like, how did you make that transition? Like, what was the inspiration behind doing it to give to people who are in that point where they're trying to figure that out? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it's already, I feel like for a lot of, uh, at least like young gay kids or whatever, yeah. it's already a bit of a hassle convincing your parents that, oh yeah, I really want to make dresses for the rest yeah. of my life. You know, like that's a bit of a stretch for, I guess, some families. Yeah. So to <laughs> take that even further and uh, be like, I want to wear dresses for the rest of my life. Uh, it's a whole other story. And I don't know like what snapped, what clicked, but I think it literally was just a couple days in the first week of my sophomore year that were just like, not, I don't want to sound like stuck up because like certainly that, that wasn't the case, but like I was in a, a commercial beauty class or something like that. And just like all the comments that all these, I don't want to say This, it, this isn't about, by the way, there's no like, filter. I was, I was like, the only, it's just you and me. I was like, the only guy in this class. Yeah. And all these girls had like commentary about the things we were commenting in class. I don't know, I went to one day of the class, so. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember it all, but just like, they weren't getting it. The teacher was letting them not get it. I felt like I was getting it. And then just every other day, I was like, what is going on in these classes? I feel like I'm learning, but I'm getting so like confused with yep. what's going on. This yep. just doesn't seem right. And I don't know like what immediately. There was not like an immediate click, but yep. just that first week was. You're like, this is not for me or that I can. It wasn't I can... that I was not learning. It was not that uh, the things I was learning were bad. It, for some reason, maybe you I'll, I'll just say that the plan is aligned. Thank you. Uh, you yes. know, and yeah. it just all made sense at that point that this was not, this may have used to be what would be a smart idea for me, but yeah. now it's not. And uh, it's time for me to go pursue a more entertaining route to my life, a more exciting route for my life, in my opinion, and uh, a route that, whether I like it or not, uh, continues to 
inspire others and, and make others feel like they're worth it and valid I and I love that and because because there's there's a moment of like, you know what, I need to I want to be better and I'm gonna share it with the world. When you when you decide you're like, I'm gonna share it with the world, what were your thoughts like or your first experience in drag? Tell me a little bit about sharing it with the world. Well, I mean I I started <clears throat> trying to finagle my way into clubs way before I was twenty one and for most places here in New York that's far too early and I don't <laughs> Uh, I don't support, or well not I don't support, but I don't uh, want to inspire others to, I guess, go against the law of the land. <laughs> <laughs> but you, however, but she however, did it and you, she's amazing. And if you yes. are going to do it, don't do it a way that's not going to convince others. Like, if you're going to be a scammer, you got to like sell it, you know? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is like, so you I, committed. I, I, I practice a lot of, I, I figured like, I know the things I'm good at, things I'm not good at. Yes. So let's like try to hone yes. in whatever my craft is at yeah. home and work on that until it feels yes. like I can convince yes. you that I've been doing this for a year and a half at yes. least. Yeah. Um, and then I'll feel comfortable going yeah. out. So um, I just met like a lot of people out here in uh, nightlife in New York City that were super supportive of me, whether they knew that I was a JL bait or right, not. Right. Um, <laughs> I just know that a lot of people saw the talent and the fire in my eyes and all those idioms and nonsense and whether it was like going against the law or not yeah. uh, they wanted to support that and let that thrive and flourish because I think they saw that I had potential. either like a twisted brain in my head or potential you have something. one could say yeah I've got something in my head I think yeah. it's, a, it's a tick it's but a uh, <laughs> but I had something and people uh, encouraged that and they let that slide and uh, let me develop my my craft and you know there's clearly plenty of things that I still have to work on and I feel like if you feel like you're at the top of your game then you're at the bottom of your game because yeah. life yeah. is all about growing and I stuff so yeah. I feel like just the, the support of the people in, in New York and the fact that they could see something in me yeah. whether it was just intention or talent or desire uh, I just appreciate that so much. So I I love everything. I was like I love everything about that kick, kick and stretch. Well, no, so, no stretch first. No, no, no. <laughs> so you are experienced in the, the night the nightlife of being a drag queen. Yes. And then you learn about RuPaul's Drag Race, and you're like, well, like, uh, tell me your thoughts when you. I mean, as I far as the was, timeline goes, Drag Race long before of course. New York City nightlife. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I know that, but people just made for the up. viewers. Yes, <laughs> for those in Minnesota that. I love okay. Minnesota. Minneapolis is always one of my favorite yes. crowds. They're like, I'm like, I don't know. I couldn't even point to this in the map, but you are <laughs> slaying me. Yeah. So you dabbled in drag, and you're like, this is for me, and this is. And so you're like, well, what was the motivation for you to be like, I'm going to interview, or like, I'm going to send in a tape for RuPaul's Drag Race? I mean, to just, I guess, be so obvious or uh, obvious. Um, yeah. When I turned 21, I feel like that's where. You know, you can audition for Drag Race at uh -huh. 18 or whatever, but you know, most places in the States or abroad can't really book you unless you're over 21. Okay. So it's just been, um, I don't want to say unspoken customary, but mm -hmm. there had never been anyone under 21 on Drag Race. Yeah. So for my 21st year, I figured, you know what? Pedal to the metal, no day but today. No it. one's going to make a spectacle of you if you're the 22 year old. I love it. But if you're the 21 year old, then it's oh, that young, annoying, little bitchy fashion yeah. girl. Yeah. Oh, she's so young and so annoying. Yeah. And I went on that thing and wow, was I young and annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I actually authentically don't think you were young and annoying. You were well, I was young. You were young, <laughs> but I mean, you were being yourself. You apply and you get accepted. Yeah, I convinced a lot of people. And what, what, what the thing the is, is like, you scammed, like, so you scammed them. Like, what did you do? You were yourself. You're like, you were like, yeah, I, that was probably the bad part. Um, no, I mean, I, I just, one of my biggest inspirations in life and in, in art and whatever is Lady Gaga. And yeah. I know that when she was coming up in her career and stuff, yes! Yes, we yes. yes. love Lady Gaga. Yes, we love oh the Gaga. We love the Gaga. Her whole thing was like, I'm going to wear the same outfit all the time so that people get my image. I'm going to, you know, not fake it till I make it, but she had a, a much smarter way of saying that or a much yeah. more creative way of yeah. saying that. And I think that's just like kind of how I try to present myself uh, to others and live my life at that time in my life. You know, you have to believe whatever that fantasy is, because if you don't, no one else will. Yeah. So, I mean, I was just like, I'm the best 
this works. Here's some reasons. Keep so going. you can see like the evidence and yes. I guess that was convincing enough. And you believe 14 your, episodes later, you were the, the, the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. Like that to me, I, I think what I want to take from that is that like you believed in yourself. Where did you get that belief in yourself? How do you help someone get that belief in themselves? I mean, I'm not like the most confident person as most people are. I don't always know that I can sell myself on things, especially I guess like after that big moment in my life where it was like pedal to the metal. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays I'm like, ah, a little more hesitant about things for no reason. So I think it's just like reminding yourself that nothing really matters, that you can live whatever, like you can turn any fantasy you want into your reality if you continue yes. to believe it and lie yes. to people and, yes. and yes. tell yes. them I'm the best in the world. Yes. You might not be the best in the world yes. and they might not believe it either, but after a while, that might instill that lie into your brain. And I know we were taught that like, lying is the worst thing you can do. How to be dishonest, oh, I can never. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, lying to yourself, if that makes you a better person, fantastic. If lying to other people, makes them perceive you as a better person and that makes their life better, let the lie slide, you know? It's, that's like <laughs> the whitest it. of lies, I yeah. think. And, uh, you know, lying to improve your life and others, as long as it's not harmful or hurtful yeah. or whatever, yeah. Yeah. go ahead, yeah. you know? So you, you get on the show and you are progressing through week after week after week. Give me a little bit of where, how you felt. Like, oh, uh, stressed. Yeah. I know, like, right out the gate, like, for season 10 for me, like, I, not that I thought it was going to be like a walk in the park, but it got very bumpy very quick for me, which was frustrating because I just thought I was, I guess I was under the impression that it was going to be like a really, not easy time, but like mm -hmm. that I would get along fine with everyone because we mm -hmm. were all in the same boat and that we would all vibe and that people would get me because I was with like like minded people. Mm -hmm. But the way that I think and the way that I speak still, doesn't necessarily click with a lot of people. Yeah. So I had a kind of tricky start actually, you and did. I was yes. really, really um, overwhelmed and frustrated with myself. And I don't wanna say it was like very dark, but you know, it goes by so fast mm -hmm. that you can't even realize like how like, oh God, dark that was. But like, not that I wanna say that I wanted to quit, but there was like plenty of times right in the beginning where I was like, this is not make, not that this isn't lining up with my fantasy, but this is just not making any sense at all. Like, I'm like, how am I getting in a fight on day one? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Ah, but like, so, that's not it. So at those moments when you want to, so at those moments when you want to quit, what do you say? Like, how do you get past that? Because there, there well, are they, people. They send someone else home that week. <laughs> Facts on that. They send other people home. No, I mean, but I, I mean, like, I, for those people who, like, I, so I'll, I'll try and relate this to myself, which is very easy. There are days when I'm like, I am not gonna get through today. Mm -hmm. And I make it only because I'm so focused on what I do. For you, for people that are, that are struggling with that, how did you get through that? Like there was a day where you're like, how, do I, how am I gonna make it through today? Yeah, I mean, besides like the, the people in production trying to like, not, I, I was not like a, a quit risk or whatever, yeah. but yeah. you know, everyone was still trying to be like, girl, you're fine, yeah. like, persevere through this. Yeah. I think having, like, a good support system uh, definitely never hurts. Also, having strong goals is important. I know it's hard for people to set goals sometimes when they don't know what the goal is mm -hmm. supposed to be yeah. um, or how that will improve their life. But certainly, you know, having the prize dangling over my head was plenty of incentive, as it should be. But after a while, I, I think you just kind of figure out that, like, okay, I made it through today. Yeah. If tomorrow's harder, screw tomorrow. Yes. But like, let's see how the third day yes, is gonna be. Exactly. And uh, I think it really was just that. And once you find your groove, that's its own thing. And I know the story I'm sharing is just, you know, 28 days of insanity, but- uh, Pun yeah. intended, well done. Yeah. Yes. He's, Did I make a pun? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's the insanity guy, so. Oh, so. a baby. <laughs> My PayPal just chinked right there. Uh, no, but I mean, 28 days of insanity. You just figure out how you're gonna make the best of it. If yeah. you're feeling like crap in that type of situation, yeah. but you find out that like these other people in a completely different way are yeah. feeling a little more crappy, whether yeah. it's how they presented themselves in a challenge or on the runway or whatever. It's like, well, let me not cheat myself on some sort of successful and fruitful career 
when someone else might not be doing their best right now, not let them do their worst, but you know what? Don't let you do worse than them by being your worst enemy. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So you're in the finale and you've made it to almost the top. I mean, how are you feeling? Yeah, when it was the finale, I, I came in with a, what I thought was a great game plan. Um, I did find myself in situations that, you know, uh, stuff happens and, and you can never plan and you know, plan enough for yeah. a particular thing, especially something that is so like make or break. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have lip synced on this show because one, I would have loved to have seen or um, shown the judges what I can do, but also that I could have like rattled that out of my system. Yes. Like, okay, this yeah. one is like, yeah. it's not gonna be so scary it. in the future. Yeah. So yeah. that's my first time lip syncing and yeah. those girls have done it at least once, twice or three yeah. times. Yeah. So I was the newbie of that situation, but you know, um, all I did was just like think like, not that things were gonna work out for me, cause you know, sometimes they don't and that's life. But I was like, you know what? In my delusions, this first lip sync is gonna end up fine for me mm -hmm. somehow. And this second lip sync is gonna end up fine for me somehow. And um, I remember changing into my outfit for the second lip sync. I, actually I don't remember it because I was like <laughs> mentally blacked out. I was rattled, shook, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But uh, you gotta put the pedal to mellow when the time is right. And I think I did that and I think I for just, me, if, if I can interrupt no, no, please, you, please, please. I think for me, it's like, so it goes back to the point where I knew three things when I was growing up. I knew I was going to be in Del Sonics, which is an eighth grade choir. I knew Jeopardy, and I knew I was going to be a professional soccer player. And I don't know what it was, but having that goal that I set as a kid, I just realized that that was going to be, that's what my life was meant to be. And I was going to prepare for all of that. Right to get to where I was. And it sounds like you were doing kind of the same thing. You're like, I, you know what? I'm the best at what this is. And I believe it. And I believe in who I am as a person. And therefore I'm going to allow myself to be myself. Absolutely. Which I think is magical. For me, it was uh, finally being able to live life in color. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, previous to Sean, as I say, I always feel like I was living in black and white. And then when I uh, met Sean, I feel like, all of a sudden everything was in color because he allowed me to be myself. Oh. And being yourself is magical in itself, right? For sure. Because the moment you can be yourself, I think it is priceless. So so you're on the stage, you win. How are you feeling? Well, I mean, on that stage, not to be a, a not a party pooper. -poo, well, I mean, we, we they, filmed some they alter, filmed some alter, and, and, yes, they did. Sorry, um, yes, And you know, the night, the night that we're watching it live here in New York, um, you know, I'm expecting someone else to be called. Little, well, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. She was Team Eureka. I get it. Anyways, um, no, I was. Just, I mean, we all were expecting like. How are they going to show yeah. this first lip sync with Asian Seven? That was a bit stressful, but you know she was such a trooper for that, and we moved, yeah. you know, past that, and it seemed to not be, you know, the end of the world, which nothing ever is, even if it feels like it's the worst moment in you or your yeah. friend's life. It's not the yeah. end of the world. Yes. And uh, oh, bitch, they started that second lip sync, and I don't even know if they got it on the camera because they filmed the whole thing, which is kind of weird, but not that weird. <laughs> I mean, my face once I saw it, like it felt like. They had some good shots. <laughs> <so. laughs> yes, yes. But I mean, it was very surreal. It was, it was uh, heartwarming to win in front of my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, just chilling on the couch. Yeah. Uh, it was stressful to win in front of people that I really respect and and was so proud of. Um, but at the end of the day, like, someone's got to win. Yeah. If it's gonna be you, yeah. You might as well be the happiest person for yourself. Yeah. And uh, it was just like very validating, very surreal. Um, luckily, my mother was here, uninvited, <laughs> as usual, uh, to celebrate with me and a couple of my friends. We were, they filmed it somewhere downtown, yes, <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Um, but a, a few of my closest friends were there. It was just really sweet, intimate. And then we went um, back up to Hardware Bar here in New York, and I just got freaking plastered with Kimura Black and, Good. and Shaquita. As, as you should. should. As you should. Right. So, so I, I think, I think uh, the message I think that I want to portray is this. 
you put in a lot of time and effort for it. You had this vision that this is what you wanted to do and you succeeded in it. Sure. And so therefore, once you reached that, what did you do? To, how, like, like you're, you're the bitch, like you are, you are everything. You are like, so how did you continue that from, for those people who are now, they want it, right. like what do you do? Like how do you, what's the message? Like, like I, how do you continue to be Aquarian? I mean, that part's uh, proven itself more tricky than it would seem. Yeah. Um, I think obviously after you win, once you're like new day, new city, new show, mm -hmm. next place. Yes. Um, that all gets a little overwhelming and stressful, but you manage to figure it out. Yeah. And uh, right now I'm still trying to figure out how to feel like I did back then. Not yes. that I've like lost the spark or lost no, anything, but it. you know, time does make things feel a little bit more mm -hmm. dull. And uh, you know, every day I need to wake up and remind myself, okay, if I'm doing something that's not making me feel great or whatever, I'm yeah. still Aquarius, I'm still the one yeah. who did that. Like sometimes you just gotta like watch old videos of yourself and remind <laughs> yourself like, whoever that person was, that body did that. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, you just gotta keep pushing yourself forward. And, and cause I think the second that you stop moving forward, you know, it's, as a good friend of mine, Isaac Newton says, yes. an object in motion stays in motion. So yes, if you don't keep yes, boogieing yes, and woogieing, yes, yes. you will be gone. Yes, so. yes, I love that. Yes. I love that. So it's so funny you say that because um, he's good. Yeah, Are you guys friends with Isaac Newton as well? No. Yes, I am. I knew him. We went to college oh, together. Oh, added two years ago. <laughs> yes. He was, well, very, I, like, he was very chatty. I was like, oh, stop yeah, talking. Until like, that apple fell on I know. <laughs> I actually have a tattoo on my thigh that says, always forward because I just believe that, you know, there's a book that we read our kids that says what the road said. It's called mm. what the road said. And uh -huh. I can't remember ex the exact words, but it says something like, basically sometimes you'll pause, sometimes you'll accidentally move backwards in a way. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the road keeps on going. Absolutely. So, you know, you just gotta keep moving forward. Thank you so much. Of yeah. course. Thank you, Sean. Good Thank you, job. Scott. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Um, I, I love your bow tie. I don't even think y'all caught the bow tie. I love the bow tie. tie. I saw really every good. minute of it. It only has um, a little bit of my foundation on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love a coming of age story because every single person in the world experiences that. Mm -hmm. You know, our lives are ever flowing, ever moving. I'm really big into the universe. And so, you know, every year, 365 days, there, that's something you cannot stop. You're gonna keep moving no matter what. And Never so ever. for every young kid out there, or even if you are 38 years old and you feel like you cannot be yourself, I mean, you, Scott, myself, we, you know, we're just proof that if you continue to trust and believe in yourself, you will continue to be yourself. And I think that's the most important message that I got. I mean, you started out in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, mm. just like Will Smith. Mm -hmm. I was, I was West Philadelphia. I, was, I wasn't born, I was but West I was. West of West Philadelphia. You were West. You were Westchester. Westchester. Yes. Right. I was Philly. I was West Philly. Oh, were you really? Yes. Yeah, I mean, through. I know. I didn't do my history or anything. Yeah. <laughs> for the first seven years. It's just really important for people out there to know that no matter where you are, you are going to go somewhere. Yes. And believe yeah. in that. You're gonna go somewhere. Yeah. And 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 you didn't bring this up, and I just wanna say really fast, you know, one of our kids mm -hmm. literally loves every female superhero. And he told me at our slumber party a week ago that he wanted to design superhero costumes. That's so cool. And he actually saw um, I think it was Shangela online, and he was like, Oh my god. Like, Papa, do you see that cape? Like, that cape is amazing. Like, he didn't know oh. it was a dress. And so, I, you know, I also want to motivate and inspire parents out there. If you have a kid out there and they want to express something that makes you uncomfortable, let them express that because that's going to help them, like, thrive and move forward and most importantly have confidence. Like, you came out here with confidence. Yes. I think your, yeah. your performance was spectacular and great, but I think when you can walk out with confidence, that's just the true testament of where you are in your life. So thank you so much. My appreciation, thank you. And I hope you all enjoy this episode and I hope you continue to trust and believe in who 